Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight the crew put together the new commanders from Jumpstart. We brewed them up and let's see how they will do in a CEDH setting. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Adam, piloting Ormos, Archive Keeper. This deck is a control deck seeking to disrupt opponents until a combo can be assembled to draw your deck through Ormos' ability. Adam's opening hand contains a Narset's Reversal, Mana Drain, Felwar Stone, Mental Misstep, Jataxian Probe, Island, and a Snow-Covered Island. Next, we have Ryan, piloting Muxus, Goblin Grandee. This deck is an aggro deck looking to play a lot of goblins and assemble an infinite combo using Conspicuous Snoop. Ryan's opening hand contains a Mana Crypt, Goblin King, Perforos God of the Forge, Chaos Warp, Homeward Path, and two mountains. After that, we have Zack, piloting Naeth of the Dire Hunt. This deck is an adaptive deck seeking to cast Naeth and accrue value through Naeth's ability while playing large creatures that are hard to deal with. Zack's opening hand contains a Court of Calling, Green Sun Zenith, Prey Upon, Mana Crypt, Imperial Recruiter, Vandal Blast, and a Wooded Foothills. Finally, we have Mike, piloting Emil the Blast. This deck, called Horse and Around, is an adaptive deck seeking to use key cards to go infinite with Emil's blinking ability. Mike's opening hand contains a Kogla, the Titan Ape, Earthcraft, Wild Growth, Summoner's Pact, Cloudstone Curio, Snow-Covered Forest, and a Dryad Arbor. Without further ado, let's kick off this eager embarkment of enemies exceedingly engaging each execution. Adam wins the Flip the Switch Challenge and gets to start us off. Adam draws a card for turn and then pays two life and casts a Jataxian Pro, targeting Mike. He looks at Mike's hand and draws a card. He plays an island for turn. He casts a Chrome Mox, imprinting Narset's Reversal. Adam passes the turn. Ryan draws a card for turn and then plays a Mountain for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. Ryan passes. Zack draws a card for turn and then plays a Wooded Foothills. He cracks it for a Taiga. He also casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Green Sun Zenith where X equals 2. In response, Adam casts Mana Drain, countering the spell. Bummed out, Zack ends his turn. Mike draws a card for turn and then plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Wild Growth, targeting his forest. In response, Adam pays 2 life and casts Mental Misstep, countering Wild Growth. Everyone is astonished at Adam's control over the board so early, and Mike passes the turn. Adam draws a card for turn, and in his first main phase, he has 3 colorless through Mana Drain. He plays an Island for turn. He uses his colorless floating to help cast his commander, Ormos, Archive Keeper. Sitting pretty on a turn 2 5 5 flyer, Adam passes the turn. At the end of Adam's turn, Ryan casts Chaos Warp, targeting Adam's Ormos. Adam sighs, Ormos goes back into the command zone, and then Adam shuffles and reveals the top card of his library, which is an Emery, Lurker of the Lock. He puts Emery onto the battlefield, Emery triggers, and Adam mills four, one of which is a Force of Will. Then Ryan moves to his turn. Ryan draws and then plays a mountain for turn. He casts Perforos, God of the Forge. Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws a card for turn and then casts a Finehorn Elves. He plays a Strip Mine for turn and then passes. Mike draws and then plays a Dryad Arbor for turn. He does nothing else and passes. Adam draws and then casts a Felwar Stone. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and then plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Goblin Recruiter. Recruiter enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. Then Recruiter's ability resolves, and Ryan fetches up a Mog Fanatic, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker, Torch Courier, and Conspicuous Snoop. He arranges them accordingly and puts them on top of his library. Ryan passes the turn. During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws and then casts an Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter enters, and Zack fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He sees Ryan's combo coming, so he decides to sacrifice Strip Mine, destroying Ryan's Mountain. He plays an Ancient Tomb for turn and passes to Mike. Mike draws and then plays a Command Tower for turn. He casts Earthcraft. He gives the turn to Adam. At the end of Mike's turn, Adam casts Opt, scrying one and drawing a card. Adam draws for turn and then casts a Graph Digger's Cage. This is a real shutdown for Ryan and Adam follows up with a Ristic Study. Study resolves and Adam passes the turn. Ryan draws for turn and then plays a Homeward Path. He casts Conspicuous Snoop. Ristic Study triggers, and Ryan pays the one. Snoop enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. Ryan reveals a Torch Courier from the top of his library and passes the turn to Zack. 
During his upkeep, Zack loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws for turn and then plays a forest. He casts Dockside Extortionist, paying the Ristic Tax. Dockside enters, and Zack creates 7 treasures. He taps his Ancient Tomb to cast his commander, Naeth of the Dire Hunt, paying the Ristic Tax. He casts Prey Upon, having Naeth fight Conspicuous Snoop, paying the Ristic Tax again. It resolves, they fight, Snoop dies, Naeth triggers, and Zack draws a card. He attacks Ryan with his Imperial Recruiter. Ryan takes the hit, and Zack ends his turn. Mike draws for turn, and then casts a Dusk Watch Recruiter. Mike passes the turn. Adam untaps, draws a card, does nothing else, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike flips his Dusk Watch Recruiter into a Kralin Horde Howler. Also on his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws for turn, and then casts a Goblin King, paying the Ristic Tax. It enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. He attacks Zack with his Goblin Recruiter, which now gets plus one plus one a Mountain Walk thanks to Goblin King. Zack takes it, and Ryan passes the turn. Zack draws for turn, and then moves to combat. Naeth triggers, and Zack pays for the ability, targeting Naeth. He attacks Ryan with Naeth. Since it must be blocked due to its ability, Ryan blocks with his Goblin King. Naeth triggers, and Zack draws a card. Then Goblin King dies. In his second main phase, Zack plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it for a stomping ground into play untapped, paying 2 life. He casts a Cinder Vines, chapping his Ancient Tomb to pay the Ristic Tax. He casts Vandal Blast, targeting Adam's Graft Digger's Cage, paying the Ristic Tax again. Adam sees that he's trying to do something by targeting his cage, so in response, Adam casts Miscast, targeting Vandal Blast. Cinder Vines triggers, and Adam takes 1. With that, Vandal Blast is countered. Zack passes the turn. During his upkeep, Mike's Kralin Horde Howler flips back into Duskwatch Recruiter. He draws for turn, and then casts a Draneth Magistrate, paying the Ristic Tax. He casts a Lightning Greaves, Cinder Vines triggers, and Mike takes one. He equips the Greaves onto Draneth Magistrate, and gives the turn to Adam. Adam draws a card, and then plays an Island. He does nothing else, and passes the turn. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. Also in the upkeep, Mike's Duskwatch Recruiter flips back into Kralin Horde Howler. Ryan draws his card, and then casts a Torch Courier, paying the Ristic Tax. It enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. He casts a Goblin Bushwhacker, paying the Ristic Tax again. Perforos triggers again, and everyone else takes two. He attacks Mike with Goblin Recruiter and Torch Courier. Mike takes the hit, and Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Zack sacrifices his Cinder Vines, targeting Adam's Graft Digger's Cage. In response, Adam casts Whir of Invention, where X equals two, improvising with his Graft Digger's Cage. He fetches up a Winter Orb onto the battlefield. Then Cindervine's ability resolves, and Graft Digger's is destroyed. Then Zack moves to his turn. During Zack's upkeep, Mike's Kralin Horde Howler flips back into Dusk Watch Recruiter. Zack draws, and then plays a Forest for turn. He moves to combat, paying for Naeth's trigger, targeting Naeth. He attacks Ryan with Naeth. Ryan blocks with Goblin Bushwhacker, triggering Naeth, and Zack draws a card. All through, Zack passes. During his upkeep, Mike's Dust Watch Recruiter flips back into the Howler. He draws for turn, and then casts a Summoner's Pack. He doesn't pay the Ristic, and Adam draws a card. He fetches up a Karametra's Acolyte into his hand. He casts Karametra's Acolyte. Ristic triggers, and Adam draws a card. He equips Lightning Greaves onto the Acolyte. Mike passes. At the end of Mike's turn, Zack casts Court of Calling, where X equals 4. Ristic triggers, and Adam draws a card. Then Adam responds by casting Flusterstorm, countering the Court of Calling. Then Adam moves to his turn. During Adam's upkeep, Kralin Horde flips back into Duskwatch Recruiter. Adam draws for turn, and then plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it for a snow-covered island. He casts Preordain, scrying 2, and drawing a card. Adam passes. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws a card for turn, and then casts Mog Fanatic, paying the Ristic Tax. It enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. He attacks Zack with Torch Courier and Goblin Recruiter. Zack takes it, and Ryan passes the turn. Zack draws for turn, and then casts a Thorn of Amethyst, paying the Ristic Tax. In response, Adam casts Spell Pierce, countering the spell. Zack plays a Mana Confluence for turn, and passes. During Mike's upkeep, he pays for Summoner's Pact. He draws for turn, does nothing else, and passes. During Adam's upkeep, Duskwatch Recruiter flips into Kralin Horde Howler. Adam draws for turn, and then plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it for an island. He casts Copy Artifact. 
Copy Artifact resolves, and Adam has it enter as a copy of Felwar Stone. All through, Adam passes. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He draws for turn, and then casts Imperial Recruiter, paying the Rhystic Tax. It enters, Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes 2. Recruiter's ability resolves, and Ryan fetches up a Dockside Extortionist into his hand. He attacks Zack with Perforos, God of the Forge, which is now a creature because of Ryan's devotion. Zack blocks with his Imperial Recruiter, and Ryan passes the turn. Zack draws, and then plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. He does nothing else, and passes. Mike draws for turn, and then casts a Hyrax Tower Scout, paying the Rhystic Tax. It resolves, the trigger goes onto the stack, and Mike responds by tapping itself to untap a snow-covered forest through Earthcraft. The trigger resolves, and Mike untaps itself. Mike casts a Fierce Empath, paying the Rhystic Tax. He fetches up a Woodland Bellower into his hand. He attacks Adam with its Kralin Horde Howler. Adam takes it, and Mike passes the turn. During Adam's upkeep, Kralin Horde Howler flips back into Duskwatch Recruiter. Adam draws, and then he plays an island for turn. He casts out Windfall, much to the lament of both Ryan and Mike. Everyone discards their hand and draws five. All through, Adam passes. During his upkeep, Ryan loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He draws for turn and plays a Nykthros, Shrine to Nyx. He casts a Mox Diamond, paying the Rhystic Tax, and discarding a Mountain. He activates Nykthos, adding five red. He casts Warren Instigator, paying the Rhystic Tax. It enters, and Perforos deals two to each opponent. He casts Goblin Bombardment. This is a real problem, because people are pretty low on life totals, so everyone definitely takes notice. Ryan attacks Zack with Perforos, and Adam with his other creatures. Zack blocks with Finehorn Elves. Adam blocks Mog Fanatic with Emery. Before damage, Zack casts Beast Within, targeting Goblin Bombardment. Rhystic Study triggers, and Adam draws a card. In response, Ryan sacks Torch Courier to Goblin Bombardment, targeting Emery. With that, Bombardment is destroyed, and Ryan creates a 3-3 beast. Perforos triggers, and everyone else takes two. Then Adam takes the damage, and Ryan passes the turn. Zack draws a card, and then plays a forest for turn. He casts Domri Raid. Rhystic Study triggers, and Adam draws a card. He activates Domri's second ability, having Naeth fight Ryan's Warren Instigator. Naeth triggers, and Zack draws a card. Then Instigator dies. Zack casts a Soul Ring. Study triggers, and Adam draws. He casts Runic Armistor, triggering Study, and Adam draws again. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Boreal Druid, paying the Rhystic Tax. Zack passes the turn. At the end of Zack's turn, Mike uses his Earthcraft to untap his snow-covered forest. Mike draws for turn, and then casts a Birds of Paradise, paying the Rhystic Tax. He attacks Adam with Hyrax Tower, Draneth Magistrate, Duskwatch Recruiter, and Fierce Empath. Adam takes the damage, and Mike passes the turn. At the end of Mike's turn, Adam casts Frantic Search, drawing two and discarding two, and untapping three lands. Adam draws for turn, and then casts Narset, Harder of Veils. He plays a Mystic Sanctuary, entering untapped, putting Windfall onto the top of his library. He activates Narset, looking at the top four, and revealing a Windfall. He then casts Windfall. Everyone discards their hands, Adam draws seven, and everyone else draws one. Adam casts a Mox Opal. He then casts a Laboratory Maniac. Adam passes. Ryan draws for turn, and then starts off by activating Nykthos, adding 3 red to his pool. He casts Legion Warboss, paying the Rhystic Tax. In response, Adam casts Counterspell, countering the Warboss. He attacks Adam with his Beast, Goblin Recruiter, and Imperial Recruiter. Adam blocks the Beast, and takes the rest. All through, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Zack's Mana Crypt trigger goes onto the stack. Zack responds by casting Nature's Claim, targeting his own Mana Crypt. Rhystic Study triggers, and Zack taps his Mana Crypt to pay for it. Nature's Claim resolves, Mana Crypt is destroyed, Zack gains 4 life, and then the Mana Crypt trigger resolves. Zack loses the flip and takes 3 damage. Zack draws for turn, and then activates Domri's first ability, looking at the top card, and then putting it back. With nothing else, Zack passes. At the end of Zack's turn, Mike uses Earthcraft to untap his snow-covered forest. Mike draws for turn, and then plays a Prismatic Vista. He attacks Adam with Duskwatch Recruiter and Hyrax Tower Scout, killing him. In his second main phase, Mike cracks his Prismatic Vista for a planes. He casts his commander, Emil the Blessed. He activates Emil, targeting Fierce Empath. Runic Armasaur triggers, and Zack draws a card. Then Emil's ability resolves, Fierce Empath flickers, and Mike fetches up a Regal Force into his hand. He casts Regal Force. It enters, and Mike draws seven cards. 
He pays two life and casts Noxious Revival, putting Kogla, the Titan Ape, onto the top of his library. He uses his Earthcraft to float three mana. He equips Lightning Greaves onto a meal. He activates a meal, targeting Karametra's Acolyte. Runic Armor Sword triggers, and Zack responds by cracking his Misty Rainforest for a forest. Then Runic Armor Sword resolves, and Zack draws a card. Then Emil's ability resolves, and Karametra flickers. Mike equips the Greaves onto the Acolyte. He taps Acolyte for mana, and then activates Emil again, targeting Regal Forest. Runic Armor Sword triggers, and Zack draws a card. Then Emil resolves, Regal Forest flickers, and Mike draws 7 cards. Mike then casts Village Bellringer. With Bellringer's ability on the stack, Mike uses Earthcraft to float mana. Then Ringer resolves, and Mike untaps his creatures. He casts Kogla, the Titan Ape. It enters, and Mike has it fight Runic Armor Sword. Nath triggers, and Zack draws a card. With nothing else, Runic Armor Sword dies. Mike demonstrates a loop of generating infinite mana through Emil's ability, flickering Village Bellringer using Earthcraft to untap his basic lands. He casts Survival of the Fittest. He activates Survival, discarding a creature, and fetching up a Walking Ballista. He casts Walking Ballista, where X equals 100,000, and then uses Ballista's ability to shoot everyone at the table for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, what an interesting game. Let's take a look at some highlights. First, Adam was doing a fantastic job at keeping the board under control with his counter magic. His turn one plays followed by a turn two commander definitely came out of nowhere. His whir of invention into Winter Orb was a move that a lot of people didn't see coming and prevented a lot of plays from happening the way that other players wanted. His first windfall was well-timed and removed two tutor pieces in one spell. His Narset into Windfall didn't pay off as much as he'd like, because many were already in a low card count to begin with. Ryan's conspicuous Snoop combo coming down early was aggressive, but painted a large target on his head. He became the target of multiple stacks and removal effects due to this, and his library stacked with the combos just completely hosed his involvement in the game. Even with that, his Perforos was applying a lot of pressure to life totals at the table. Zack's ability to both remove and draw through his commander's ability is super valuable and did a lot to help control Ryan's board state. His runic Armasaur made Mike jump through a lot of hoops just to get his combo going. Mike went largely unnoticed throughout the majority of the game. His early setback took the targets off of his back and onto other players. He waited for the right opportunity and was actually presenting infinite on the board for a turn or two but didn't want to let anybody know before he was ready. The player of the game was Adam. His control of the board prevented others from climbing too far ahead. His stacks pieces at the right times also prevented early wins and progressing too far. The most valuable card goes to Perforos, God of the Forge. Even when Ryan's plan was set back, this card kept applying pressure to the table with every creature Ryan cast. When its devotion hits, it becomes a formidable attacker and blocker too. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.